Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome once again. Today we are continuing with our exciting study of Measure 2. And so we're going to begin with a little review, but today we're going to learn how to correctly use and recognize the active and passive participles for Measure 2, and we'll learn a few other things. So hopefully you remember what we did last lesson we introduced this wonderful measure measure two and now of course now we have the measure two verb we use the verb well we need all the other parts that go with it as well but trust me this is going to be a much simpler process uh, than you think and simpler than it was learning for measure one so by the time we get down to all ten measures you'll be just breezing through this but let's review anyway Okay, so remember, what was an active participle? Exactly, right? Active participle. It was the fa'il, and it referred to the doer, or also someone who is in the, the state of doing something. Okay, let's take an example. One of our favorites, right? Kataba, to write. You remember the active participle, katib which is a writer. I mean, all we did was plug ka ta ba into the place of fa ein lam, and fa il became ka tib, do er became writer, and so forth. Let's take one more. Sha ra ba, you know, means to drink. The active participle will be what? What will that be? Very good. Yes, our hidden microphones that we have surveilling you 24 hours a day. Notice that you got that right. And it's going to mean exactly. Good. Right. Sharib, like katib, fa'il, daris, talib. Right? The same rhythm, always the same rhythm. It means a drinker or someone who is in the process of drinking. Okay, you remember all this. Yes, see that? I can see that you do. All right, so that was the active participle. You feel very good about those. What about the passive participle? What was that? Do you remember the name and the pattern and then also the meaning? Okay, yes, you got those right. Okay, so this is called the mafool. Mafool is also the pattern for it. And it means done or the one who is done to, the receiver of the action, depending on how we use it. So, let us stick our root here again. Keteba, to write, into the passive participle, into the mafool. So what are we going to get and what will it mean? Excellent. Very proud. Yeah. So here we have the ma fool. We stick in our three root letters. So we replace the fa, ein, and lam with ka, ta, ba. And of course we get maktub. Maktub. But notice the rhythm. Ma fool, maktub, mashrub, mamnur, masmur, and so forth. Right? And instead of done, it's written. Maktub is written. Remember, that's in the in the Bible. That's when Jesus is speaking to Shaitan, to the devil. He says, Maktub is written. So, let's look at some sentences with these. Well, what do you see? A lot of katabas there. Okay? So, if you know the pattern, this is really great. If you don't know the patterns, this would be confusing. Our first sentence, al katab yaktub al kitab and in here, El Kitab Maktub Bil Arabiya. Well, where is our active participle? Right. Katib is an active participle, is a doer, and a doer of writing is a writer. Okay, can you see the passive participle? Hopefully you can, because we just went over it. It's this one, Maktub, meaning written, to be written. So there we go. El-Katib 
Yaktab al kitab. What is yaktab? Well, you know it's a verb because of the way it's conjugated and has this at the beginning. This is a thing that is written. So the writer writes the book. Okay, here al kitab, which is of course the book. Al kitab maktub bil arabiya. The book is written in Arabic. Right, so if we send you to the library to read a certain book, we come back, ask you if you read the book, and you say la, we say limada, you say el kitab maktub bil yabaniya. Wala afam al yabaniya. Remember this? Yes, you do. Okay, don't spill the bath water everywhere. All right, yeah, if you're watching this in the bathtub, you probably get electrocuted. All right, so that was active and passive participles. Just remember. The doer and the done to. Okay, now we just need a little more review. Don't worry, there is more review to this than there is actual lesson. Once we get done with the review, uh, it's just uh, pretty simple. Remember, what was measure two? Hopefully, you remember it from last lesson. Okay, remember, what does it mean and how do we form it? Exactly. Right, measure two is causative, meaning to cause whatever measure one is. It also has the secondary meaning, it can be intensive, and you tell that by the, the context, but usually causative. And all we did was put a shedda over this middle radical, or this middle letter, and it becomes measure two. So, measure one, kataba is measure one, means to write. Measure two will be yes and it will mean exactly okay so kataba two tas we shed out this ta and that that makes it by definition that causes it to be measured to now what's the meaning to cause someone to write well in our day of computers we don't do this a lot but uh prior to the the advent of PCs in the 1980s, this was something that was very common. This is something that was extremely common in Arab culture, classical Arab culture, to dictate. Take a letter. Right? The boss never did his own writing. He had a secretary. Take a letter. Dear so-and-so. We don't do it as much now. In fact, you probably don't do this at all. But this is what it means, to cause someone to write something. Okay, let's take another one that's familiar to us. Darasa, it's a study, of course. Measure two is what? Well, the pattern is very easy to form. Exactly. And the meaning? All right, there's our pattern. Darasa. Darasa. We have this shedda. It's all we do that, by definition, turns this into a measure two. Right? So we cannot have a measure one. Uh, verb that has a shedda in, in there. You can't have it. This becomes measure two. And what is the meaning to cause someone to study? It's to teach. Now, you may be saying, wait a minute, there's a lot more to teaching than just making people study. Well, if you were to go to a classical Arabic uh, school, a Quranic school, even today, and watch what goes on, that's pretty much what they do. You memorize the Quran, and someone just stands there and makes you recite it over and over again. So that is basically uh, what the teacher did. But anyway, this, this word has come to mean now, the use means to teach. Okay, so let's go back to our original example sentences. Yeah, you say you can't hardly wait. Remember, we had al katib yaktub al kitab, well al kitab maktub bil arabiya. Okay, this was great. The writer was writing the book. Now, what happens here? Suppose we replace writer with this case al malik. Hopefully, you know the malik is right. The malik is the king. Not just Elvis, but any king, like a, a Malik uh, a Saudiya, the king of Saudi Arabia. Al Malik Yaktab a Rasala? The king is writing a letter? Mm, probably not. That's not what you do when you're a king. Okay, the king, more likely, he Yukatib a Rasala. He dictates the Rasala. Now, all we need is this Shedda to make it Yukatib. But remember the vowel pattern. Al Malik Yukatib. 
Aracela. He dictates the letter. Great. Now let's look at this one. Aracela blank bil Arabia. Now if we put maktub, that would mean it's written in Arabic. What if I want to say the the letter is was dictated in Arabic? Well, you're going to need what? You're going to need the passive participle. So now we need to learn how to form that. So just like, I uh, gave you a little preview there, just like measure one had an active participle and the passive participle, measure two is going to have one um, of each, measure three, measure four, and so forth. Now before you say, wait a minute, that's a lot of words. Actually, the pattern we're about to show you is going to work for all the other measures. Measure one is the only one that was unique. So. Uh, what we're going to learn now is going to apply for a whole lot of things. Okay, I know what you're saying. Let's get to it. I can hardly wait to learn this. Or you can hardly wait to do something. Okay, so the active participle is the doer of the action. Now this is where it's very important to remember the present tense form of the verb. Remember last lesson we said it's critical that you know how to do this. Okay, so remember it's we, we put an oo over this first letter, an a, short short vowel a, feta, and this, this is a kesra. Even though, notice the computer font puts it up top, it's under, when it's under the sheda, that means it's down here. You daris, you daris. Remember, measure two had how many syllables? Right, you daris, it has three. Measure one to study yak, uh, yadros, yaktob, yashrub, two syllables. This becomes extremely important because in order to form the active participle, all we're going to do is chop off this conjugation, right, this conjugation prefix, and replace it with a mu. It's even the same short vowel. The only thing we're replacing here is a meme. You remember way back in the, the second lesson, we told you meme is one of those letters that is frequently added to the front of words, and you just had to be used to it. Well, you've already seen several situations where it is added to the front of words. Here is yet another, uh, and there are more. This is very frequent add-on. So, mu in front of the present tense of measure two. So you take you datus, make it mu datus, and that's a person who does it. Very simple. It's like one slight change. That's why it's important to learn these, memorize them, practice them, because they're tiny little changes, but if you don't remember them, then you're, you'll be confused. So a mudaris is one who teaches. So a mudaris is a teacher. Okay? Ustad really means professor. A mudaris is a teacher. This is more appropriate to use when you're talking about madrasa thanawiya, madrasa al-ibtidaiya. Uh, really, ustad is not the correct word. Mudaris. Now, the great thing is, again, see how these patterns reinforce? What does a mudaris do? A mudaris, you daris. All right. Great. Now, this is, this is going to get even better. No, you're saying, how could this possibly get better? Well, the passive participle, the, the act of being done. Now, you're going to say, wait a minute, that looks a lot like the active participle. The only difference, if you notice, the only thing moving is that vowel. So instead of mudaris, it's mudaras. This is going to hold for every root in the language. Mukatib, mukatab. Mufa'il, mufa'al. Now, let's be realistic here. First of all, these short vowels are never going to be written in, in, in anything you're reading, other than the Quran or a children's book. You're never going to find them written in a, in a book in a, a newspaper, uh, on a website, I mean, you, you're not going to find it. So, these two words are going to look the same. Secondly, you mean, listen to the pronunciation difference. It's the difference of a short vowel. Mudaris, mudaras. It's a tiny, tiny difference. And so, in reality, uh, yes, there is a difference, 
but it, it's so slight it's usually not going to be noticeable. In most cases it's what? It's the context. If we say al mudaris dakhla asof the mudaris entered the class. Well which one are we talking about? The active participle, the doer, or the done? Well it's the doer, obviously. Okay, if we say arisala uh, mukattaba, which one are we talking about? Dictated or one who dictates? Well obviously it's the, the done to. Well, let's take one more example. I know you're saying, no, it's quite all right. Now, here's a verb you've probably not seen before, but again, once you learn this one word here, you can unpack everything else that goes with this root. So, darraba, darraba, not darasa, but darraba is to train. Slightly different than to teach. We use this, uh, say, mudarab uh, askari. A military trainer, mudarab karate, a karate trainer, or something like that. Someone who trains. Now, notice, do not confuse this with daraba, with a dod here. That means to hit. Now, depending on your training methods, you may be one heck of a personal trainer. You may do both. But uh, right here we have, we have daraba. Daraba is to train. So, I want to know trainer and trained. And again, don't touch that dictionary. There's no need to look this up. If you know this verb you know both these words. Okay, give you a second. Trainer. Okay, let's think about this. Trainer is what? It's a doer. A doer is an active participle. Trained. Trained is done. Trained, that's a passive participle. In reality, they're going to look very similar in any kind of normal text that will be indistinguishable because you will not have the short files. So, a mudarib, a mudarib is a trainer. Mudarib is trained. Um, this word is used uh, much more commonly. But again, context is going to tell you which one we're looking for. Okay, um, so We have accomplished our basic mission, but there's bonuses. We have we have extra for you. I know, I know you're feeling we've been too generous. You don't want to hear any more. We're going to make this even simpler. Okay, so this was our passive participle. Mudaras, mukatib, uh, whatever, mufa'il, right? This is going to work for, for every uh, root in the language. Now, if you remember back in... Measure one, we had another kind of word. It was called a place noun. How do we form the place noun? Well, the place noun is exactly the same as the passive participle. Okay, The passive and active participles look very close. The, pact, the passive participle and the place noun are identical. And so here, this is purely context. is going to tell you which one we're talking about. Okay? So that's even better. Now, before we go on, I just want to point out, I said that this pattern is very, very important to remember where we stuck a mu in front of uh, the, the basic verb, and then all we did was change the short vowel up here. Uh, we stuck a mu in front of the basic verb, you daris became mu daris. Well, this pattern, we're going to go through it for all the other measures, but for measures 3 to 10 as well, we do the same thing. Okay, so we stick a mu in front of the basic verb. And so it's not like you have to learn completely different active and passive participles for all the rest of the measures. Basically, all you learn is the, the uh, verb, and you can fill in everything else automatically. Isn't this fabulous? I know, you're very excited. Okay, so we have one more bonus section for you. No, no, I know, we're being too kind. But we're going to talk a little bit about how to use your Hans Weyer Dictionary. Okay, so this is an excerpt right out of the Hans Weyer, scanned from Hans Weyer. It is a root you have probably never seen before in your life, but suppose you came across a word with this root in it. Well, this is, this is the beginning of the entry. It goes down further. So the first thing you see, obviously, that's the root, the three-letter root, tahara. That is your, your three-letter root there. So any word that has this in the root, you have to come to this page. Okay, now notice the first thing Hans always lists 
are the verbs. These are all the verbs. And if you notice, he does not spell them out. He assumes you know what a measure two looks like, what a three, what a five. He assumes that you know those. If you don't know those, you're not going to be able to use this dictionary. Um, great. So what's the first thing we get? Measure one. These are all the measure ones. He doesn't even bother to put a Roman numeral one on there. He's going to assume you know this. So the meaning of this Measure one verb, tahara, is to be clean. Okay. That's what you need to know there. Okay. Uh, this thing, just for your information, the thing that is in uh, parentheses here will always be in this position. This is the measure one mazdar. If you remember back to that uh, lesson, we said measure one mazdars do not have a standard pattern, so those he has to write out for you. Okay. Now, you see a Roman numeral two. Well, you know what that is. This means measure two. Okay. Now, Hans is never going to put the word yudahera. He's never going. Uh, he's never going to put this word, even though this is the measure two. He's never going to write that. He puts two, assuming you know that. So if you went looking up the word yukatib, yudaris in the dictionary you won't find it. What you'll find is kataba in a Roman numeral 2. Okay? Uh, this is why you need to know uh, these measures in order to be able to use the dictionary. And uh, if, if you ever go on to uh, some websites and listen to these experts on the Middle East you can see some pretty funny mistakes when obviously they did not know how to read the dictionary. Uh, okay. These, and it's kind of hard to show you where it begins and ends, but these things here are the measure two meanings. Now, he's got a lot of meanings. They pretty much all mean the same thing. But notice, measure one, to be clean. Measure two, to clean, to cleanse, to purge, to purify. Measure one is to be pure. Measure two is to purify, to cause to be pure. Okay? Uh, and, and so this is why these measures are important. Now, just a little preview of what is to come. Oh, you notice you see a 3 and a 5 here. And you thought you'd only use Roman numerals to keep track of the Rocky movies. Okay, so what does that mean? This is where the measure 3 meaning is and the measure 5 meaning. So he assumes you're going to know those patterns as well. Now, what do you? I thought there were 10 measures. Well, as you can see, most roots do not have all 10 measures in, in use. Theoretically, they exist. They're just not used. So, uh, for example, there is no 4. There's a 1, a 2, and a 3. There is no measure 4 for this verb. There is a measure 5. There is no 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. They're not used and they have no meaning. Okay, so that, if, you ever, if you've looked at your dictionary and seen this long paragraph, with all the Roman numerals and wondered what the heck it is, now you know. And you can go and press your friends. Okay, so we have covered a lot, but we have a lot of review exercises and practices which you have to do to move on. Uh, it's important because uh, next lesson we are going to finish up measure two with a very important pattern and then we're on to three and so forth. So, on behalf of my good friend Bella, we want to wish you all the success of your study. We will see you again tomorrow. Insha'Allah. Shukran jazilin. At the menalakum. Yom Saeed wa Jamil Jiddin. Insha'Allah. Ma salama.